Hey everyone, welcome back again to the channel and to another video. Today we are going to have a first look at a Linux distribution called Garuda. Garuda Linux is based in India and it's an Arch Linux based distribution with several features. The first important feature is that it's using the Linux Zen kernel, which we are going to explore now in the video. Another feature is that it's using the BadRFS file system with snapshots. That means it's basically taking snapshots with time shift every time the system upgrades. So we are going to test this out. There is also a GUI for managing kernels. So enough talking, let's dive into the video and have a look at Garuda Linux. So let's go ahead here and explore a little bit what is Garuda Linux. I already prepared here the tabs for you guys. So let me pull up here the browser. There you go. So this update came out just two days ago on the 1st of September and it popped out here on DistroWatch and I had a look at it and I was interested because it's an Arch based distribution. Now it's based in India and it comes with a variety of desktops like Deeping, GNOME, KD Plasma, i3 and so on. Now there is a description here which says that this is an Arch Linux based distribution. It comes with a graphical installer Calamares and has some advanced graphical tools for managing the system. It goes on here to highlight some of the features of the distribution, but let's go to the website and have a look directly there. I already prepared here the website here on the top left, and this is the Garuda Linux website. As a curiosity here, you might ask what is actually Garuda? Well, I looked this up actually on Wikipedia, and because we have this bird here, when we go to the Wikipedia, we see here Garuda actually is a legendary bird or bird-like creature in the Hindu, Buddhist and Jain faith. Now let's scroll down here because we have the download link and why use Garuda, but I'm more interested in the features. So let's click on this link here and let's have a look at these features. So we have some interesting features in this Linux distribution. One is that it's using actually the Linux Zen kernel. So as you probably know, we have several versions of the Linux kernel. The Zen version is one of them. So let's look it up very quickly. Let's open up a new tab and let's type in here Linux dash Zen and then Arch and hit enter. And we have the kernel Arch Wiki here. And let's scroll down and let's look at officially supported kernels here. And you can see the Zen kernel is one of them. So the Zen kernel, as it says here, is the result of a collaborative effort of kernel hackers to provide the best Linux kernel possible for everyday systems. And then if you want more details about it, you can click on this website and it will provide you more details on this kind of kernel. So this is one of the features of Garuda Linux. The second feature is it's using the BadRFS as a default file system with ZSTD compression. Now, as you probably know, BadRFS comes with several kinds of compressions and ZSTD is one of those. So let's look that up very quickly. Let me open up a here new tab and paste in the address I have already. And let's click here on what are the difference between compression methods. And as you can see, we have three methods. We have Zlib, which is slower, has higher compression ratio. We have LZO, which has faster compression and decompression than Zlib, worse compression ratio, and is designed to be fast. And then we have ZSTD, which is the compression method used by Garuda. Compression comparable to Zlib, so the first one, with higher compression decompression speeds and different ratio levels. So this is the level used by Garuda Linux. We have also time shift snapshots before system upgrades. This is also a very interesting feature. So every time we make a system upgrade, time shift will actually do a snapshot of your system from which you can boot when you boot up the machine on Grub. We have Calamares as an installer. We have also a customized theme desktop for every desktop environment. We have a graphical interface for managing drivers and the kernel, very similar to what we have also in Manjaro. And we have also the possibility to use proprietary drivers if you have an NVIDIA card. And we have, of course, also GUI tools for snapshot management like TimeShift and Garuda Boot Repair. We're going to look at these in a second. So let's scroll up here on the page and go to Downloads. Now, Garuda Linux comes in several flavors. So we have the KDE version, and we have two versions for each flavor. 
The Ultimate Edition here, as you can see also here on the top, it says Ultimate Editions are made for having all the right tools needed for Get Gaming started on Linux out of the box. For Ultimate Editions, we recommend a minimum of 6 GB of RAM and 20 GB of storage space. So this is going to install a lot of packages. For the Light Editions are made for having only minimal packages pre-installed out of the box. And this is what I'm going to use in this tutorial. The requirements here are for 3 GB and 10 GB of storage space. Now, the flavors that Garuda Linux comes in are KDE, we have a GNOME version, we have also a XFCE version, which is the one I'm going to download. We have also a Wayfire version. Wayfire, if you don't know, is a 3D Wayland compositor inspired by Compiz and is based on WR roots. It's meant to be actually a very light environment. We have also LSQT, which is a very light Qt desktop environment. We have also the Deepin edition, offering the Deepin desktop environment. And we have also the i3 window manager version, both in Ultimate and Lite version. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to download actually the XFC Lite edition, which I did already. You can choose your source here. And I'm going to boot up my virtual machine from this ISO, which I already prepared. So let me close down these tabs here. And don't worry, I will put a link to all of these in the video description below. So let me close them up. And I'll pull up my virtual machine, which is already open to go. And when you boot up your ISO here, you will be greeted by this screen, which is very similar to what you see when you boot up Manjaro. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change the time zone to mine, which is Europe. And I'm going to have to scroll down to the bottom and change my key table to my key, which is Switzerland. And I could go actually with free because I don't have an NVIDIA card here. And then I can choose to boot the installation. Now, this is going to go into a live install and it's going to take a moment to boot up. And as you can see, we have Plymouth here with the logo of Garuda Linux. So we boot it up now in a desktop environment. And let me first adjust the screen resolution because it's a little bit odd right now. And that's because I'm on a VM. So I'll go to applications, settings. You can see also already the graphical environment here. It's XFC with a customized theme and then display. And I'll choose my resolution here, which is 1080p, and click Apply, and keep the configuration. And I'll close this window down, and I'll move the window over here, because the stats here are now in the middle. When I will install the system, this will be correctly displayed on the side. But just for now, I don't want to go through now the desktop itself. I just want to install the distribution. So I'm just going to click here on Install Garuda. And here we have the Calamaris installer. So I'm going to choose my language, uh, which is English, and then click Next. The time zone is selected automatically because I have already an Ethernet connection here, which is up here. If you have Wi-Fi, you can connect to your network right here. So I'm going to click Next and choose now my keyboard layout, which is the Swiss German keyboard. And it's right here and click Next. Now, I don't have any other disk here other than the VDA disk, which is the virtual machine disk. And in my case, I'm just going to go with Erase Disk. And I'm going to go with no swap. You can change, of course, this accordingly. The choices are no swap, swap, no hibernation, and swap with hibernation. And then I'm going to click Next. And now I'll type in my full name here. I'll choose my username, which is only my first name. And I'm going to call the computer Garuda XFC and the password of choice. And I repeat it. And I'm going to choose the same password for the administrator account, and then I can click Next. Now, this is the summary here. It's a little bit hard to read because it's a transparent window here, but I'm just going to click Install, and then click Install Now. So it's going to take a moment now to install the system, and I'll be back when it's done. So there you go. The installation is finished, and we can click Restart Now, and click Done to restart the machine. So it's going to take a moment here to boot up. And here is Grab with the selection. So we can boot up here Garuda Linux. And again, it's going to take a moment to boot up. And we have still the Plymouth here with the logo. And we are greeted now by LightDM, which doesn't display the correct resolution, but that's a problem with my VM. So let me enter my password here. And hit enter. And we are now again in the desktop. So I need to again correct my display resolution here. So I go to Applications, Settings, and Display change to 1080p and click apply and keep configuration now let me log out once for the changes here to take fully effect 
and enter my password again. And we are back in the system and now everything is displaying correctly. So we have the system monitor here. As you can see, we have CPU, RAM, swap, storage, and so on. Right now it's using around 1.14 gigabytes of RAM out of eight gigabytes. So it's definitely not the lightest, but this is a very customized version of XFCE. So this is the desktop of XFCE for Garuda Linux. And we have here this welcome screen. So let's have a look at it because there are some interesting things here. So we have the first tab, which is the general tab where we can connect to the website, the forum, GitLab, the repository, Telegram, and Twitter. These are all the social media for the distribution. And let's go under tools. So under tools here, we have first the Garuda settings, which are actually appearing also up here. And under Garuda settings, we can basically change several settings here, like the kernel version, user accounts, and also the hardware configuration. So for example, if you have an NVIDIA card, you can configure it right here. And let's close this up. We have also the boot options here, and we need to enter here our sudo password. And this is basically a configuration tool for Grub, where we can define the seconds to wait until Grub boots up boot directly into Garuda Linux here, and we have also the kernel parameters. We have already a theme enabled and some other options that we can change. So let's close this up. We have also the network assistant here, the partition manager, and also time shift, which is already available to us. So we can enter our password here and configure time shift for a first run. So because Garuda is using BuzzRFS, we choose already BuzzRFS as a default here, and then click next. The disk is already selected, so we can click Next. Now you can select the schedule, so that's fine for me, so I can click Next. And enable BuzzRFS queue groups, which is recommended, it's already there. So I can click Next and then Finish. And now Time Shift is ready to go. We have also System Cleaner here, and we have also the Software Center, which is in this case PAMAC. We're going to look at this a little bit later. Let's go under Maintenance. Here we have a choice to upgrade the system, but the first thing I want to do is actually to refresh the mirrors because I want to have the fastest mirrors in my country. So I'm just going to click here, refresh mirrors. And as you can see here, I'm going to generate a list based on the country where I'm in right now. And I'm going to choose HTTPS mirrors here. So for me, that's all okay. So I'm going to click next. And then I can click here, save to the mirror list. Need to enter my password. And the mirror list is now done. So we have also other options here to edit the repositories. We can also remove orphaned packages and we can also clear the package cache. And we can also remove the database lock when that happens. Now, remember one of the features of Garuda Linux is actually to have snapshots when we make an upgrade to the system. Well, let's try this out, shall we? So let's click on upgrade system here. And we need to enter the password and hit enter. It's going to search for updates here in several repositories. And as you can see, we have already some updates. So let's do them. Let's hit enter here to proceed with installation. And it's going to take a moment here to download and install these packages. And as you can see already, time shift is running and creating the snapshot here. And now it's going to install the package, which shouldn't take too long because there are only 29 packages here. And there you go, the packages are now installed and the system is up to date. That means if we reboot the machine, we should be able to see actually the snapshots. Let's have a look at it. Let's close down this window. We'll come back here in a second anyway. Go to applications and then log out and restart. Now it's gonna take a moment to restart up the machine. There you go. And you can see we have a new option here saying time shift BuzzFS snapshots. So let's go in there. And you can see we have a snapshot that was taken just before we updated the system. So let's have a look in there. Let's hit this snapshot here. And we have the main image and also the fallback image. So let's try to boot up the main image here and let's see if the packages we just installed are not installed. So let's boot up this image. And again, we have the logo here starting up and here we have LightEM, so I'll type in my password. And let's open up the terminal. We have a terminal here on the dock. Let's open it up. And as you can see, it's not starting up because this is actually a broken link. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to right click on the desktop, go to applications and go to terminal emulator, which is now starting up fine. So I'm just going to pin this to the dock and remove this one because it's broken. 
And as you can see, this one is actually using the Z shell and it's using the power level 10K theme, which I covered in the Z shell tutorial. So let me increase the font size here and I'll center the window and let me clean up the terminal here and I'll type in sudo pacman dash s y u and hit enter enter my sudo password and hit enter and as you can see we have the packages that we installed in the previous version of this installation so that means the snapshot is working correctly which is very cool so let's exit from here and i'm gonna reboot and i'm gonna reboot in the updated machine so it's gonna take a moment again to show the grub bootloader here and let's boot the main machine here and I enter my password again and we are back in our main installation. So let's continue the tour here of this welcome screen. Let's go under maintenance. So we upgraded the system already. We have also an option to reinstall all packages, but we can leave this off for now. Then we go under the BudRFS tab here and we have some options for the BudRFS file system. One of them, which might be interesting for you if you have an SSD, is to enable the file system trim which is gonna improve the performance of your SSD drive. So I don't have an SSD because this is a virtual machine, but if you do have one, you can click here, you will be asked to enter your root password and then the timer will be started. We have also here a tool for defragmentation or to balance. And we can go also to the quick access here. This is a panel where we can perform several actions. For example, taking screenshots directly from here, screen recording and so on. You can explore this yourself if you would like to do that. And under control here, we have some controls for our system. So we could log out also from here. We have also a settings tab where we can actually enable also high DPI if you have a high DPI display and also GDM Wayland. So this is the welcome dialog box. It's a useful one and you can choose whether you want to have this displaying every time you start a machine. In my case, I'm going to check this off and then click close. Now let's have a look here at the programs we have installed. As we saw already before, we have the Z shell as a terminal of preference with the power level 10K theme already installed. And we have also our Garuda Linux here logo, which is used as a menu. So here we have the accessories, which we find normally in every distribution. We have a development tab here with two programs. We have the graphics tab here with several programs. We have the internet tab here. We have Firefox as a default browser and Thunderbird as a mail client. Under multimedia, we have already several programs installed. We don't have VLC, but we can install this. And under office, we have some programs, but LibreOffice doesn't come pre-installed here. And then we have our settings and some other settings here under system. So let me right click here on the desktop, go to applications and then settings and then appearance. So you can see here, we have already some theme installed in Garuda Linux, and these are the white source. So this is inspired from the new Mac OS operating system, which is coming up in the fall, which is called Big Sur. And Garuda Linux is using as a default, also the window manager here to replicate the buttons from Mac OS. As an icon theme, we have the Tila icon theme with the full scale of colors. So you can change if you don't like the blue one here, we can go for the green, for example. And you can see how it looks like here. This is the file manager, which is Thunar in Garuda Linux. And we have also the font settings here and also the settings for our appearance. So let's close this up. Now up here, we have the bar with our calendar integration. This is the weather widget, which is not working right now. I have to go to properties here and my city is already here. And you can see now it takes already the data there. So it's working right now. So we can close this up and we have several widgets also here on the side. We have here a widget for the color temperature. We have also the language widget, the internet widget. We have also here the package manager widget. We have also the Garuda manager settings for changing the kernel, the notifications, the hard drives, the clipboard, and then we have the volume menu and our power menu. So let's open up Firefox for a minute here. And let's go full screen. You can see Firefox in Garuda Linux comes already pre-installed with several extensions. We have, for example, here the XDM browser monitor and also the canvas blocker. And we have also some others like the dark reader and so on. So it's nice to have them, but if you don't need them, you can also, of course, remove them. So let's close this up and close the tabs here. So let me open up again the Garuda menu. I'm gonna search it for here, the Garuda welcome. And let's go to maintenance and then edit repositories. 
we need to enter our sudo password and you can see here we have the repositories available in the distribution so let's scroll down here we have the core repository we have the extra repository the community repository we have also the multi-lib repository and also the chaotic aur repository so what is this chaotic aur well it's one of the repositories available for arch linux if we open up here the browser and again let's go full screen here and let's type in, in here chaotic dash aur arch any tenter and let's go to the link here unofficial user repositories and you can see we have it right here it's chaotic aur and as it says here auto builds aur packages they maintainer uses update them hourly a few are daily and it's hosted in brazil so you can use this if you want to if you don't want to you can disable it in the configuration file we just looked at we have also here available our package manager if we click here on tools and go to software we have the pamac package manager available to us now i tested it out several times but when i click here on the categories nothing appears here it says no packages found and this is actually the browse option is not installed or the updates option but i can still search for packages so if i click here on the search icon and i search for example for spotify any tenter you can see Spotify appears in several repositories. So we have Spotify also on this chaotic AUR, but here on the side you can filter. So if you want to look just through the AUR, you can click this link and we have also the Spotify version here. If you don't like to install programs like this and you prefer to install via Yay, we can definitely do this. We just search here for Yay. And as you can see, we can install it and then we can use Yay also in the terminal. We can also use the terminal as usual to install packages via Pacman if you prefer to do that. We can close this and let's close also this window and open up the Z shell. And let me go full screen here and increase the font size. There you go. We can always type in sudo pacman syu, enter the password. We saw already this before and you can see it works absolutely fine. Now, if you don't like this power level 10K theme and you want to change it, you can always run P10K and then configure to reconfigure your theme. When you click this, you have to go through basically the whole configuration for the power level 10K theme, but then you can change, for example, also your login prompt. I'm not gonna do this now. I just wanted to show you how it's done. So we can quit out from this and close the terminal. So this is a very quick look at Garuda Linux. It's an interesting Arch Linux based distribution and I'm going to use it for a while and dig a little bit deeper here and see what's available. I've tried several desktop environments and the one actually which works most reliably in my virtual machine is the XFC desktop environment. I had some issues with the other ones, especially GNOME and the i3 window manager, but I think the issues are more related to the virtual machine itself than the distribution. I will test those on a laptop eventually. So as I said, this is just a first look and I'm going to use it for a while and maybe give a more in-depth review if you guys would like to see that in the future. So there you go. This is a first look of Garuda Linux. It's an interesting distribution. It's Arch based. Everything which is based on Arch Linux, I am always very interested in anyway. And it seems to be a very functional distribution. Now I'm going to test it out now for a while and see what else I can find out. And if you guys are interested, let me know if you want me to do a full review. I will definitely do that. For now, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support us, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much again for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.